Good morning. How are we doing this morning? <clears throat> a couple of quick announcements, and we're just going to pray and get right into the service this morning. This is a consistent reminder. Tuesday mornings, uh, 10 a.m., uh, women's prayer right here in the sanctuary. Wednesday evening, 7 p.m., right up uh, <clears throat> right here in the sanctuary, and that Wednesday is open to everybody. Sunday, this afternoon, 4 o'clock, we'll be meeting down at the... Uh, Park in uh, Winchester, <clears throat> where the gazebo is, and uh, we'll be uh, spending some time down there in prayer. Zoom Bible study, 7 p.m. on Tuesdays, where we discuss the Sunday morning's message, and uh, I have the coordinates for that. If you have Zoom on your on your uh, device, uh, tomorrow I will be sending the link out, so if you don't have it uh, installed, you can just click the link, and it'll take you right to it. <clears throat> but that's uh, at 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights. Stand Strong Men's Ministry, first Wednesday of September. We're going to be starting up again, September 2nd, 7 p.m., and it's a pizza night. Guys, so at 7 o'clock, don't eat much for dinner at home. Come on in, and we'll, we'll uh, chow down on pizza and have a good teaching, some good fellowship. That's all I got for, uh, for uh, uh, announcements. So let's just pray and open up the service. Yes. Um, let me talk with Kathy about that. She's not with us this morning because she's really, really sick okay. this morning. So uh, we'll be praying for her in a little bit. Okay. Father, we do thank you for the privilege we have to gather together, <clears throat> to worship you, to get into your word, to bask in your presence. Lord Jesus, we know that you are here because your word tells us you are. But we still hand to you the invitation. We invite you. We want you. We desire you. We need you to be a part of this, this time. We're your children. We've gathered together before our Holy Father. We've gathered together to worship you, to lift up that name of Jesus that is above every name. And we ask you, Lord, that you will anoint this time, anoint our worship, anoint our worship team, that we will come into the Holy of Holies this morning, where we will be instructed by you, corrected by you, and loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Morning. Morning. Stand in worship this morning.
My heart will sing no other name. 
I'm drawn on you. I am standing with my arms out strong, and I am saying to come. I have been telling you to come, to come. For I have given you all. I have already done all that I need to do. It is now up to you to come. I seek, I seek you, I seek your heart, whole heart, undivided heart. I love you with an unending love, but I seek you to come and to love me. I seek you to come. I want you to know me. Do not hide from me, because you cannot hide from me. I see you, I know who you are. I know your heart, I know your mind. I know every thought before you even say that. Come and let me show you who I am. For I died for you. I called you to come, to come up to higher ground, to seek me. I have given you all that you need to be holy. I have given you my word. My word is truth. You must know my word. You must believe my word. You must believe I am who I say I am. You cannot pick and choose what you like in my word. You must accept my whole counsel and know that it is my word and my word is free. I want you to be free. I died to free you from sin and death. I won the victory. But you can only have that victory in me as you surrender, as you yield to me, as you abandon your life and to me and you trust me. And you believe that I am who I am and I do what I say I can do. I am after whole heart, not divided heart. I am not after little bit. I am after all. I gave my all and I want your all. So I'm saying to you, come. Come and trust me that I do. I have a plan and a purpose. And in me you will find victory. So I go before you, I lead the way. If you will just draw near to me, submit yourself unto me. Submit to me and resist the devil and he shall flee from you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat>
goodness is running after, it's running after me. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so. minutes and just pray. I do want to pray for my wife, Kathy. I don't know if she's watching online or not. <clears throat> if you are, we love you, Kathy. Love you. Father, we do come before you and we bless your holy name. We bless you because you are God and there is no other. We thank you, Jesus, that healing is in your wings. Even as we saw last week in in your word, how you healed that man that was at the gate called Beautiful. Yes. Where he was asking for alms. And Peter said, alms I do not have, but we, what we do have, we give to you, rise and be healed. Father, we speak healing to Kathy. We yes. speak healing to so many others that are yes. dealing with, uh, <clears throat> with affliction. Yes. Father, that they rise up and be healed in Jesus' name. And what the enemy has tried to put upon them to drag them down, Lord, you will use that to lift them up. Yes. Yes. That you will rid them from that. Yes. And Lord, that you will gain all the glory and honor yes. in it. Yes. We bless you, Father. Yes. We bless you, Lord. This world seems to be going crazier by the day. where rioting is considered by many, in our, even in our government, as being good and being okay. Lord, it's not good. It's not okay. We need to have reestablished in our country the rule of law. We pray for our police officers, both federal, state, and local. We pray for them, Lord, yes, that you will protect them and give them wisdom. Yes. They are willing to put their lives on the line on a daily basis to keep us safe. Yes. So, Lord, we ask for your anointing to be upon them. Yes. And that you keep them safe. That they will be filled with even yes. Solomon's wisdom. Yes, Lord. We praise you for that, Lord. Yes. We pray for our president. That no evil would befall him, him, his wife, his family. Put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. And we pray for wisdom for him as well and for his uh, leadership team, the cabinet. Yes. Lord, that they will, even as a full cabinet, will press into you and seek you, yes. seek your faith, that they will seek your word. Yes. And we know, Lord, that all hell will come against him for that. Intercede for our cabinet. And we intercede for our Congress. Yes. 
our Senate, in Jesus' name, the legislature, yeah. Father, that they will make laws according to your word once yeah. again. Yeah. It sounds impossible. But we also know you're the God of the impossible. Thank you. And Father, as we get into your word this morning, I ask, Father, for your anointing. Yes. Your leading. I present myself to you, Lord. And I confess to you, Father, I cannot fulfill this calling you have placed upon me without you. So, Lord, speak to us. We are your servants and we are listening. Cause your word to open up to us this morning in new and fresh ways. I pray, Father, if there is anyone under the sound of my voice that is either here or watching online that is not saved, that today would be the day their names would be written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Give us ears to hear what you are saying in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, this is uh, now part three of what was going to be one message. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you agree with me this yeah. morning? Yeah. There is awesome power yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I'm going to read once again the same text that I've read each week. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 11. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, can you say, therefore, therefore. God also has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, say that name, Jesus, Jesus. every knee should bow of those in heaven of those on earth and of those under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah that we, have, we serve the God that has a name that is above every name. He's not just one of many gods. He is the one and only God. He is the one that is all powerful. We found that out last week when we looked at Acts chapter 19. And in Acts chapter 19, we had <clears throat> the uh, seven sons of Sceva that tried casting out a demon out of that man in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Remember that? <clears throat> and they got whooped. He got whooped up big time. They got whooped up big time, all seven of them. In fact, the scripture says that that one man leaped upon them, that man that was demon-possessed leaped upon them and beat him up. To the point where they, were, they, were, they ran out of the place naked and wounded. Every single one of them. You can't just take the name of Jesus into your life if you don't have the person of Jesus Christ in your heart. Right. Amen? We see that so clearly in the scriptures. We saw last week how, <clears throat> how uh, uh, Peter and John, when they came into the gate called Beautiful. They were going into through the gate called Beautiful into the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And there was this man that was sitting there that had been crippled and been since, since birth, been brought there every day and laid there to beg for alms. He truly needed it. Not like some of the panhandlers that we see that are just turn that into their living rather than go get a job. This guy couldn't get a job. He couldn't work. There was no welfare system back there. That was the welfare system, to sit someplace in the, in the, uh, <clears throat> in the uh, uh, town square or by the temple to beg for alms. 
But Peter said, alms we do not have, but what we have, we give to you. Rise up and be healed. Hallelujah for that. And he went leaping and jumping and praising God into the temple, into the church. I think that is so cool. He didn't leave the church going out. He was healed outside and he came in praising God. And, and, and I said last week, I need to correct myself a little bit. <clears throat> I said that, that, that we shouldn't be looking for that here. We should be looking for it out there. And I want to correct myself. I think we should be looking for the power of God everywhere. Right. In here and out there. I think it'd be so cool if somebody was healed in here and they went out of this place leaping, jumping, and praising God. I think it'd be so cool if you laid hands on somebody out in, the, in, the, in, in uh, our, our community and they were healed and they come leaping, jumping, and praising God into here. I think that'd be so cool too. However it happens, we need to be looking for the power of God in our lives wherever we are. So this man was healed. Now, interesting to note, if you turn with me to Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, Acts chapter 4. <clears throat> this morning I want to read verses 1 through 13. Acts chapter 4. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, <clears throat> and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in the name of Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They were disturbed over that. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. Now begins the saga of them always being arrested. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000. This is just a day or two after Pentecost when 3,000 were saved. So now 8,000 people in Jerusalem have been saved just in a matter of a couple of days. <clears throat> and it came to pass on the next day, verse 5, that the rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, by what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man by what means he has been made whole, or been made well, let it be known to you and, all, and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus, say that, Jesus, of Jesus of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which was be, had become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Hallelujah. There is no other name under heaven, no other name under heaven that is given to us by which we must be saved. You see, there is salvation in his name. Amen? Amen. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. Yes. This is a real reason to testify to his name. Yes. Praise God. He has saved me. He has saved me out of darkness and he's put me in his marvelous light. He has saved me from a life of addiction and overdoses to a life of, of well, relative health anyways. <laughs> he has saved me. He has saved you. He has taken you out of and placed you into his kingdom. I was a part of a kingdom before Jesus. I was part of a kingdom, but that was the kingdom of the enemy. That was the satanic kingdom. And most of you know that I was really wrapped up, Kathy and I were wrapped up in drugs and, and all. You know what drugs is? Drugs is sorcery. Drugs, according to the scriptures, is sorcery. You know, the, the sorcerers and the, and the witches, they make up their potions and, and would change people's minds. It's, it's sorcery. <clears throat> and I'll tell you, on some of those drugs like LSD, I saw demons. I could visually see them, although I didn't recognize it at the time as to who they were. And they had a control. 
on me. They had a control on Kathy. They had a control on so many people that we hung out with. They have a control on so many people to this day because of drugs, because of alcohol. But see, God intervened. God took the scales off of our eyes. He unstopped our ears. He made a difference in our lives. He showed us how real he is. And when it came to that place where I finally said, yes, Lord, be Lord of my life, things began to change. I started coming out of, see, it wasn't like in, it's in the spiritual realm, it was instant. Okay, you understand that? In the spiritual realm, when I received Jesus Christ as Lord, I was taken out of darkness, placed in his marvelous light. But now became a physical process where some people is like, boom, instant. With me, I came into the kingdom kicking and screaming. <clears throat> it took a period of about <clears throat> eight years to where I was finally set free. And when I was finally set free, it was instant. But there was a lot of stuff that God had to do in me to bring me to that place. But the point I want to say this morning is, is, is what Peter has said here. He says, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The temple leaders asked them, by what power and by what name have you done this? As if they didn't know. They've been fighting this right along. They're the ones that took Jesus and had him crucified. <clears throat> when Jesus was hanging on the cross, they even hollered up to him, if you're the son of God, if you're the son of man, then get yourself down off that cross. Even one of the ones that was crucified with him said that. If you are... They already understood this, but they just were so jealous, so angry, so wrapped up in their religiosity. By what power or by what name have you done this? And the disciples answered, there is no, there, nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. That word saved, we looked at that a couple of weeks ago. You remember what it was? The Greek word, sozo. Can you say that? Sozo. S-O-Z-O, sozo. Do you remember what it means? What it means is to be saved or to salvage. Do you remember what salvage meant? I thought it was pretty cool. Salvage means by the in the Webster's dictionary says it is something that is extracted out of trash and rubbish because of a value that is seen in, the, in that and usefulness that is seen in that object you see when God saved you he he took you out of the garbage of this world he took you out of the trash heap that you were in and he brought you, and, and he did that because of his great love for you, because he saw a usefulness in you, that he saw a treasure in you. This is what salvation is. It's not just Jesus hanging on the cross, but why? Why did he hang there? Why did he go through that when he didn't have to go through it? He went through that because he sees a value in you. He sees you as a treasure. And he sees that if, we, if you're not a Christian, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord, you're in a rubbish pile. You may have a, everything going well in your life. You may have a nice car, nice house, nice kids, nice wife, nice job, all of that. But if you haven't got Jesus, then you are in a trash heap. I'm not saying your wife and your kids are trash heaps. That's not what I'm saying. All right? Don't misinterpret me. I don't want to get an email saying, Boy, you better be careful when you see me because you called my wife a trash heap. No, I'm not. I'm saying about the condition of your heart. I'm talking about where are you here? Where are you? If you don't have Jesus here, then your heart is filled with, with trash. It's, 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 it's rubbish. There are things that are going on in there that you have no control over. Maybe it's thoughts. Maybe it's, 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 it's actions that, you, that, is, that is hidden. I don't know what it is, but I do know this. Jesus sees it, and he died on the cross so he could cleanse you from it. 
Wow. You may have a good life. He wants to make it better. You may have a lousy life. He wants to make it better. You may have no purpose in your life. He wants to give you purpose. You see, he created you. He created you exactly the way you are, and he created you with a divine purpose. A divine purpose that cannot be found any place else but in Jesus Christ. The disciples answered, nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. They were not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Are you ashamed of the gospel? No. Say no. no. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. For why? Because it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who will believe. And that word belief doesn't mean just believe that he exists. But it's a belief that is coupled together with faith. That you receive him as Lord and Savior. It's by faith that you receive him as Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. I'm so glad he took me out of the trash heap. I'm so glad he did some dumpster diving for me. Aren't you glad that he did some dumpster diving for you? Praise God for that. I think that is just so cool. It doesn't matter what you're in. Jesus will go in there for you. You can see it in the scriptures. Even the religious leaders got mad at Jesus. And they even said, what is he doing? Doesn't he realize the, 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 the riffraff that he is hanging out with? Doesn't he realize the kind of woman that is that just touched him? Doesn't he realize these things? Oh, Jesus realizes it. And he's not afraid of it. See, they were afraid of those things. Jesus is not afraid of those things. I don't care what it is that you're involved in. I don't care where you are in your life. Jesus will come right into there, right into that place, and he will show you how much he loves you if you will just listen to him, if you will just look for him. And if you open your heart to him, he will come into your heart and he'll whisk you away out of that dumpster. Hallelujah. See, they gave testimony. These, these disciples, they gave testimony to his healing power. They gave testimony to his delivering power. They gave testimony to his saving power. And they gave testimony to his relationship power. You know, you can't really have the power of Jesus till you have a relationship with him. When you gain that relationship with him, the power begins to flow. I can't, this thing right here, I know this is foolish, but I'm going to do it anyways. Now he doesn't work. Simple thing. You're not going to make it work. No. No. How about this? No. But this? Okay, make a liar out of me now. It'll go on. Yeah, thanks, Jeff, our local electrician. Oh, come on now. Go back on. The light is on right here, okay? That means it's on, okay? Anyways, it's supposed to work. <laughs> when you plug into the proper power source, it works. God is good. Relationship power. There's no other name given among men by which we must be saved. That's, that's Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the, other th the next thing I wanted to speak on, though, this morning, is that there is great fear of his name. There's great fear of his name. Look with me. We're going to continue reading. Pick up at verse 13 through to 21. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them, to, to go outside, uh, aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do with these men? For indeed, there is a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. 
But that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whoever, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to men, to, <clears throat> more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and that we have heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, sent, <clears throat> of the people since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old, there it is right there, whom, on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. These religious leaders had a fear of the name of Jesus. Because whenever Jesus showed up, he always ruffled feathers. He always turned things upside down. Or should I say right side up? He always made a mess of things. He would show up at a funeral and he would mess the funeral up. The person would, become, would, would, would be resurrected and come alive. There's great fear of his name. Fear, I want to just three things, three quick things about fear. Fear has no rational way of thinking. Fear has no rational way of thinking. What did they say here in verse uh, uh, 16, verse 15? But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, there is a notable miracle has been done through them. It is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in this name. Why? Because this name keeps messing things up. Fear has no rational way of thinking. Think of this, how irrational this is. These are religious leaders. And they said, this, we cannot deny this. There is a notable miracle that was done by these people. We cannot deny this. That guy who is there for 40 years at the gate called Beautiful is now leaping, jumping, and praising God. He is healed. We cannot deny it. But that it spreads no further. Duh. Think of this. Council of religious leaders meeting together saying, we can't. Let this continue. Fear has no rationality to it. I would think they would be saying, how can we keep this going? This is going to be a revival in Jerusalem. As if it already wasn't 8,000 people in a couple of days been saved. But they get angry. They, and see, fear, fear when you, if you get afraid of something, you're not thinking rationally. You cannot think rationally. These people were not thinking rationally. Second thing, fear will cause ones to try to dominate by intimidation. Fear will cause ones to try to dominate by intimidation. <clears throat> what did they say in verse 7? But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them, that from now on they speak to no man in this name. So they called them and commanded them that not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. They tried to intimidate them. But what did Paul, uh, excuse me, what did Peter say? Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. You could try to intimidate me, but I'm not falling to the intimidation. If I'm doing wrong, you judge. If what we did to this man is wrong, you judge. For we cannot but speak of the things which we have seen and that we have heard. God did not give Peter and John a spirit of fear. Hallelujah. In fact, if you follow this storyline along, in Acts chapter 4, if we read verse 23 through 31, you will see where they came together and they prayed. 
And they sought God. And this is what they prayed. Verse 27. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that we will not that we will not be too afraid, that we will follow along with their, we'll just heed them and listen to them. That's not what they prayed. They prayed, now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness that we may speak your word. By stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. These men, these disciples, they were not intimidated. They did not allow the, the, uh, the religious leaders to intimidate them. They were not filled with, with fear, but they were filled with faith, and they, were, they wanted to be even more filled with, a, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit, with the power of God, with the power of his word, and they asked God, well, give us boldness, not to be timid. See, in, 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 you think it's funny? You try to say what I just said. <laughs> Intimidation is designed to cause you to be timid. Intimidation will cause you to be timid. Right, Tim? Timid. Right? But they said, do you remember what, the, what, the, what the, the, the disciples said? They said, Lord, we ask you that you will give us more boldness to speak the word of God. More boldness. They prayed for this. Now, you pray for more boldness. And you become more bold. Guess what's coming your way? In the name of Jesus, when it is a banner over the believer's life will bring persecution. It will bring persecution. And this persecution is designed by the devil to intimidate you and cause you to be timid and to keep your mouth shut and zip your lip. In Acts chapter 5, we're walking through the book of Acts here, looking at these things. Acts chapter 5, verse 40. Through 42. And they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Kathy and I are reading a, uh, a devotional right now that was written by Richard Wormbrand. Richard Wormbrand was Romanian. In the 1940s, was arrested. He spent many years being tortured daily in prisons. He, to this day, well, he's passed away now, but <clears throat> up until he passed away, he, he could not walk correctly because his feet had been so beaten for years. And yet, he said so many times, I count it worthy. I, I, I just, I, I'm, I'm counted, I, I, he was humble that God finds me worthy to suffer for his sake. And you know, there were guards in that Romanian prison that received Jesus Christ as Lord because of his testimony. One came into his, his, his cell while he was kneeling down and praying. And he came in and he yelled at, at Richard. And he says, why are you doing this? Why do you continue praying like this? What is the matter with you? Why do you keep praying to, to be released? And, and Richard just looked at him and he says, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And the man became so speechless. 
that he left the cell. Usually they would take a hold of him and drag him out for praying and then throw him back in the cell. This time he was just so flabbergasted he just left the cell. Richard says, I've been praying for you. And that was the man that was always beating him. That's love. That's understanding that when persecution comes your way, it is just another opportunity to bless the Lord. Another opportunity to reveal him to those that are dying and going to spend eternity in a living hell. And if we go back through a little bit of hell here on earth to bring somebody into the kingdom, that we can be used by God to get them out of the dumpster, then so be it. But be warned. Persecution is coming. It is coming on a fast track. You know, the leadership of the Black Lives Matter had come right out and said that they were trained fascists. And one of them just a couple weeks ago made this statement. This is the leadership of the Black Lives Matter movement, organization. He said, all white churches should be bulldozed under. You know, in Portland, with all, all the, a lot of the rioting that's going on there, um, uh, just uh, last week, we're burning Bibles in front of the federal courthouse. They were burning Bibles. The governor of California ordered churches saying that they cannot sing. Cannot sing. Why? Because the enemy hates the name of Jesus and he hates worship. When you're giving worship to God, you're giving worship to the Lord, and that worship is what Satan wants for himself. So they cannot sing. Only 25%. You can only have up to 25% capacity in your church, or 100, whichever is less. Pastors have been arrested for having services. This is just during this COVID thing. Pastors have been arrested and jailed for having services. There was one who, one pastor who, who tried to have a service but still, still uh, maintain the social distancing, whatever. So he had a, uh, had a drive-in service where they were projecting the service over the FM. Uh, you drive in your car, stay in your car, keep your windows rolled up, keep your engine on so you have air conditioning or whatever but you stay in your car and we're and so but you can see us because we're out here and and those people that showed up at that service got ticketed i mean how how much more social distance can you have than just sitting in a car with a roll it's just but it's the church it's jesus they don't like jesus There is a, I could go on and on with the list of persecution that is happening in this country right now. Please, I warn you. Make your, get your relationship with Jesus right. Get tight with him. Because he is the only one that will get you through it. But it is coming. Persecution. The name of Jesus is hated. The devil hates the name of Jesus. He will do everything he can to, to tear down that name somehow, some way. There is no other, no other religious Messiah, no other religious Savior. There is no other religious leader of, of, of different sects that Satan hates. The one he hates is Jesus. That's why Christianity is so, so um, persecuted. Nigeria right now, right now, our Christian brothers and sisters are being slaughtered by Muslims. They're being slaughtered. And we may sit over here in the United States saying, well, that ain't never going to happen here. <laughs> oh, don't, don't you bet on it. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. The devil hates the name of Jesus, but we... See, I don't want to leave it on that note. I want to leave it on this, this note. But we say, but we, but we. Press, on. press on. But we, but we. Press, on. press on. 
we press on towards that goal of the upward calling of God in Christ Jesus. That calling of God that God has placed upon you, Paul understood in Philippians, that he said, I press on to that upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Paul understood that that calling cannot be thwarted by the enemy. In fact, that calling will thwart the enemy. Hallelujah. We ultimately find, re, find redemption and we find victorious. Victory. Yeah. We find victorious, we find victory. Yeah. Victory. There's victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm so glad of that. I'm not going to try and sing it because I don't do singing very well. Although, although you're going to find out someday. Last thing I want to share with you this morning is that in Jesus, there's transformation power. It's not just getting saved, but it's being transformed. That's what I was sharing earlier. When I got saved, I was saved in the spiritual realm. It was done. But there was a process that had to happen in my life. And quite frankly, that process is still happening. I am anything but perfect. You can ask Kathy. I thank the Lord she's not here in the fact that you can't ask her this morning. But she will tell you that I'm anything but perfect. You can ask our elders. They will tell you I'm anything but perfect. You can ask yourself, because if you know me, you know I'm not perfect. But that's okay. I know you. (laughs) And I I know you're not perfect, too. See, we're all in this boat together. But there's transformation power in the name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 9, in Acts chapter 9, Verses 26 and 27. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, and he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Here is Saul, who is, his name is going to be changed to Paul in the scriptures, say, and, and the, the, he's coming to the, the, uh, the apostles, and the apostles are afraid of him. No, wait a minute, this is the guy that has killed us. He's arrested us. He's thrown us in prison. And Paul said, yeah, but, 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 um, but I had a Damascus Road experience. You see... Jesus showed up and he knocked me off my high horse. He knocked me down. He blinded me. Then he sent this man, Ananias, in to talk to me and to lay hands upon me. And I received my my eyesight again. And I have been living my life for Jesus ever since. You see, he was transformed. And there's a transformation power that is in the Lord. He will take you from death and bring you to life. He will take you from religion to a relationship. He will take you from being a theologian to being a disciple. Hallelujah. I know a lot of theologians. I've read a lot of things about theologians. And if they don't have a relationship with the Lord, they can know this from Genesis to Revelation. They can memorize it and, and, uh, <coughs> and know how certain parts of it fall together. But if they don't know Jesus, they're going to hell. You can be a great theologian and still be, I think there's probably a bunch of them in hell. And that's sad, because it's not about theology. It's about relationship. He would take you from being an accuser, like Paul, to being an ambassador for Christ. He would take you from being one that was a silencer to being a proclaimer. Hallelujah. Do you want to be a proclaimer? Yes. You want to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord? That he is the power over all things. In Acts chapter 16, and this is the last last point, and I'm going to make it quick. In Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. Now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with the the spirit of divination met us who brought, brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and us and cried out saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul, greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Hallelujah for that. He came out that very hour. You see, 
Paul was able to say that <clears throat> to this girl and to command that spirit to come out. Why? Because Paul had Jesus in his heart. The seven sons of Sceva did not. And when they tried to cast the demon out in the name of Paul, whom, uh, name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, they ended up getting whooped up. Paul didn't get whooped up here for casting by the, by the demon. But he did get whooped up by the, by the Philippian jailers because he was arrested for that. I can't imagine this. He got arrested for ministering to this woman and setting her free. I've been arrested many times. It was never for something like that. Never. But here he was. But you see, Paul understood that it wasn't what happens to him that counted. What counted was that Jesus would be glorified. There's power in the name of Jesus. Can you say that with me? There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's power in Jesus when you have him in your heart. He will transform you. Let's, let's stand. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we bless you this morning. We bless the name of Jesus, that name that is above every name. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. We bless you, Lord, because you are God. We bless you, Lord, because you have transforming power. We bless you, Lord, that even in the midst of persecution, you will help us to stand strong for you. Lord, that we not let go of you, that we not deny you, because your word is clear. If we were to deny you, you would deny us. Lord, may we not deny you. Lord, but even if at times that we have, we know you forgive. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for my salvation. Thank him this morning for, yes, your, for yes. his salvation. Thank him for how he has given you salvation. Hallelujah. Thank, thank you, Jesus. You, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, right now, in Jesus' name, I come against every foul spirit that would try to wipe away the words of, 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 uh, of salvation from people's hearts and from their minds. I come against an obstinate spirit right now in Jesus' name on those that have heard and heard and heard but will not turn to you. I come against that obstinate spirit in Jesus' name. And I break its power right now that that power that has been on these people, Lord, will be broken and that they will come to you fully and cleanly, that they will receive you as Lord and Savior. Father, I come against a mocking spirit that would try to mock your word and try to mock your power. Lord, I come against that spirit in Jesus' name that would try to belittle and put you down and raise up the enemy. Lord, your name is above every name. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name this morning, Lord. We bless you, Lord. Those that have been uh, hindered with the mocking spirit, they be set free right now in Jesus' name. They be set free in Jesus' name. And they will open their hearts to receive you as Lord and as Savior of their lives. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Father, we thank you for the power in your name. And we thank you that you give us the privilege, Lord, of being your ambassadors. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I just pass this blessing on this congregation this morning. I, pa I, I pray your blessings, Lord, of your word opening up in fresh ways. I pray, Father, that you will give revelation to each one of us of your power. The power in your name and the power in our relationship with you. Lord, I pray that there be no hindrances. We not allow any hindrance in our life, Lord. Father, the blessings of, of revealing yes. hindrances yes. between us and you. Because, Lord, it would be a blessing to have it revealed. And then we can tap into your power to be delivered and set free. We thank you for that, Lord. We bless you, Father. Bless him, church. Just bless him. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you and we praise you because you are God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you in your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 If you need prayer, come on up.